Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game into the com video. We're going to be going into a rumor roundup of the GeForce GTX 900 series. So you might have noticed that I did indeed say the 900 series has pretty much been confirmed at this point that Nvidia will indeed be skipping the GTX 800 series for desktop. There are a couple of reasons behind this. But reports seem to indicate that the primary purpose behind this is simple enough. NVIDIA don't want to cause confusion between discrepancies between its desktop range and mobile range. For example, they didn't want a situation where their desktop range was the 800 series and their mobile range turned into the 900 series and therefore people would assume that the mobile process is more, more powerful than the desktop derivatives, but obviously that's not the case. So what indeed's happening is they're almost doing like a reset, if you will, at least according to the rumors, and instead they're pushing everything to the 900 Series Plus, and that means we're going to be seeing the 970 and the 980. So we've got the rumor coming up for the 9th to the 10th, which is going to be the second generation Maxwell announcement. Maxwell, of course, being the architecture that these new GPUs are based on. However, the NDA is not going to formally be lifted until at least, say, the 19th. And the reason we know this is because there's going to be an event um, which NVIDIA are going to be hosting on between the 9th and the 10th. Now, of course, there's a good possibility that we will be seeing leaks even despite the NDA. Um, just in case you're unfamiliar with how NDAs usually work, particularly when reviews are the thing that we're talking about, what generally speaking happens is that you are sent a preview copy of the card, but it's under pain of death. In other words, it's pretty much said, if you receive this, you can't speak about it. And generally speaking, you're also given a beta version of drivers, which are typically downloadable either from a private site or maybe a cloud service or whatever. And also a reviewer's guide, which will tell you what the requirements are, what the specs of the card is, what the architecture of the card is, what they would recommend for you to set. Maybe if there's any bugs currently in the beta drivers, they'll disclose that. So let's just for just for assumption say that the date of the review, in other words, when it's formally announced, it might be, for example, the first of the month. Therefore, reviewers typically, depending on whereabouts in the world you live, if the company is in, say, the States, it may take a couple of days. If you live in, for example, Australia, for you to get the card, and then you could do the review, and then the release date, the embargo of that review, is then lifted and hopefully by that point the reviewers have done all the due diligence the review is done and then the review can be um, available and that's why sometimes you actually do get amendments to reviews because for example they might test it a couple of months later on down the line when the drivers are a bit more stable i imagine quite a few of you know that basic process but i thought i'd just highlight it anyway for the few of you who don't so what do we actually know spec-wise about the card? Well, there's a couple of things that are confirmed and many rumours. The first is that the card does appear to be pretty much confirmed at this point. It's been long rumoured to have 4GB of memory with 256-bit memory bus. Now to reiterate, I personally believe for a mid-range GPU, 2GB is probably sufficient. 3 gigabytes is great for like 1440p, but if you're trying to run at games at higher resolutions, at particularly 4K, more RAM is definitely required. That's why even the GTX 780 Ti is now available in like a 6 gigabyte version, just like the Titans and the Titan Blacks. Memory clock speeds have not been confirmed. I'm actually hearing some reports which state the memory bandwidth of the 980 is going to be around 224 gigabytes per second. Now, if you're scratching your head and you're saying, uh, uh, gee, that, that sounds a little bit slower than, say, the 780 Ti, which, by the way, 336 gigabytes per second. Once again, we're assuming that we're running with default clocks here. Well, you wouldn't be wrong. Now, the leading theory behind this is that the card isn't going to be quite as fast as the 780 Ti, or at best, is going to be about the same. We're also looking at a more efficient memory, uh, more efficient GPU architecture. Interestingly enough, 
The rumoured specifications place this to have 2560 CUDA cores with 160 TMUs and 64 ROPs. So if we were to say do a comparison, just because I know you're curious little bunnies, there's 2880 cores in the 780 Ti, 240 ROPs and 40, sorry, 240 TMUs and 48 ROPs. So what you're getting a situation is that the... Uh, 980 is actually falling between the 780 and the 780 Ti. For example, the 780 itself has 2,300, uh, just the standard 780s, non Ti, has 2,304 CUDA cores, but it also has 48 ROPs. Um, we are, however, seeing this card going to be having a lot higher clock speed. Once again, based on the default clocks, 928 MHz for the GPU boost version of the 780i, once again standard clock speeds, whereas apparently the 980 is going to be running at 1050 megahertz. I would like to reiterate, all of this is theoretical, it has not been confirmed by NVIDIA, it's not been confirmed by Asus or any of their manufacturing partners. Rumoured launch price is supposedly around the 500 US dollar mark, which is it too bad. Um... What has been pretty much confirmed at this point from what we're seeing is it's going to have two six pin power connections. And so apparently the minimum required PS2 is going to be around the 500 watt mark, but it's going to be more power efficient than let's say the 780 Ti. It's going to require about 200 watts of juice. Once again, of course, it's not been 100% confirmed, but what we have had is a 3D model showing up of the new card also a new cooler for the cards now this is actually the twin forza 5 cooler which of course is from msi so the 3d model once again is showing uh, this was a computex um it's actually had some major changes since computex should i say so they've got a couple of major changes one of them we are seeing two s live fingers and two six pin power connections connections as I've mentioned and a pretty standard display system so you've got a couple of DVIs HDMI display port so on and so forth so basically a one 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 scenario rumor has it that the cards are going to be fully DX12 compatible hmm well I guess we're gonna to have to wait and see since DX12 is not of course officially launched yet so anyway, I think that just about covers all of the rumours. Now, if you're asking me right now, should I upgrade if you're in the fence, or in, on the fence rather, in the fence, on the fence, it's a bit of a difficult and tricky situation. Personally speaking, if you've got a 780 Ti, or even the GTX 780, or even the 770, eh, you know, it would... <clears throat> Here's the problem. Games right now, they're not that demanding on average. I mean, there's like a lot of misinformation when it comes to PC where they you know people believe it requires a, a ludicrous amount of computing power. But I was trying out Metro uh, 2033 Redux, uh, 1080p, hardware physics on, and in some cases I was getting over 100 frames a second. I mean, I wasn't running a frame counter, it just happened to be when I was looking at the frame rate during my testing yesterday and the day before uh, regarding the PS4 version, I was looking at 100 frames a second, 120 frames a second in some cases, which considering at times I was actually running with like high levels of anti-aliasing, it's pretty insane. My point being that if you're only targeting 1080p, which many people are, do you really need that extra power? I mean, personally, it might be a good idea to wait, particularly if you've already got like a good gaming system, like, for example, a 780, or, uh, say, an R9 280X, or an R9 290, or something along those lines, anyway. Or even a GTX 680. If you're getting good performance, it might be a good idea to wait, because the rumours are stating that there's going to be, like, a die shrink, because at the moment it's 28nm, and the rumours are that there's going to be, like, a revision B of Maxwell, which is going to be a 22nm, which is going to happen at some point early next year. Now, if that happens, the likelihood we're going to be seeing, well, faster clocks. And there's also, once again, rumours to be a new Titan, whatever the hell that's going to be called, 
let's just call it Titan 3. And in addition to that, there's also going to be, of course, the ties. So let's assume, like, the 980 tie. And Sod knows what that's going to have in terms of its CUDA count. The other rumours are that there's going to be extra memory bandwidth for these cards. So, for example, it's going to have a 384 or 512-bit bus, but it's going to have additional memory, say 6 or 8 gigs, not been confirmed. Once again, this is like discussion around the water cooler and stuff that I'm hearing between a lot of IT professionals, what they're saying, that they've heard or whatever. So, who the hell knows? For all we know, it's going to have 1 megabyte of onboard memory. I'm just saying... Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, take care, and bye for now.